January 18th, 2024, meeting of the AMAS Policy Committee to order is 102. Uh, we'll do the roll call of Mr. Holland and me. I'm here. Mr. Cross? Here. Mr. Cole Hayes? Here. Ms. Ocon? I know she's on there. Um, Mr. Boland or Member Boland. He's downstairs. She's on his way up. Yeah. 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 So okay. we do uh, we do have a quorum, so uh, we're going to get started. Um, and, and could I get some help with the public involvement announcement, please? I don't know if that will come from Aaron or if somebody else wants to take that while he's running. Yeah, it's all so everything will be normal today, so I'll be taking the lead on most everything. Um, so AMS committee meetings are open to the public and the public is provided an opportunity to comment at each meeting. Business items are presented by staff or consultant. After the committee discusses the business item, the public is invited to formally comment. Each participant will have three minutes to speak on their topic. A couple of housekeeping items. If you're joining us virtually and you're not a member of the committee, please turn your camera off when you're not speaking on an item. If you're joining us by phone to mute and unmute the microphone, press star six. Thank you. Uh, the next item is item number three, approval of the agenda. Uh, do we have approval of the agenda? Move to approve the agenda. Second. Moved by Mr. Coldhays, seconded by uh, Mr. Cross. Uh, do we have any changes? Uh, hearing none, are there any objections to adopt, adopting the agenda? Hearing none, the agenda is approved. Moving on to item number. Chair, it looks like oh. Emma just. Ms. Pocahontas just joined us. Okay, thank you. Um, so we're at uh, 104. Um, Ms. Pocahontas joined us. Um, okay, agenda item number four. Is that where we, where we were? Uh, the, we have before us the minutes of the December 21st, 2023 meeting for approval. Do we have a motion? To approve. Second. Second. Moved by Member Boland. I'll give a second to Mr. Cole Hayes. He was just there ahead of Mr. Cross. Uh, are there any changes or discussion in the minutes? Sorry, Chair, do you mind just announcing that you join us? Oh, sorry. On TV. Uh, uh, Member Boland, Boland joined us at uh, 105. Uh, any changes or discussion on the uh, minutes? Any objections to, uh, to approving the minutes? Hearing none, uh, the December 21st, 2023 minutes are approved. On to action item 5A, which is the 2023 to 2026 Amendment 2 of the TIP. Aaron, will you be presenting? <laughs> yes, I will. Thank you. Sorry I couldn't be there today to see all your smiling faces, but I am stuck at home still. So hopefully next week I'll be back to normal. So this item is 5A. It's TIP Amendment number 2. Um, we did have this at the December 21st, 2023 meeting and the policy committee postponed this item to this meeting to give the committee members more time to review the document. So today has come back before you all. Um, we kind of went through all the changes at the December meeting. Uh, I can go through any that you have questions on, but to help with time saving, I figured I'd skip all that. What's being asked for action here is release of tip amendment number two for a 45 day public comment period. Um, I will let you know that during that time, we will also be bringing it to the assembly for their review and comments, and then we'll be bringing all of that information back to the committees. Uh, at this time, um, it'll be in April that we're anticipating bringing the TIP amendment with all the public and assembly and community council and everybody's comments back to you for final action. Um, that's all I had, thanks.
I'm sorry. If somebody is speaking, you guys are muted. Can you hear us? Yes, can we can hear now? you now. Yep. Okay. Thank you. You want me to come forward so you can hear better? Go ahead and come up. Well. All right. Hi, Aaron. Um, Will Tegan, Trugiak, uh, resident. Um, in reviewing the 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 tip uh, from for the path from 2015 to 2025, um, there for the past 10 years, there's been zero non-motorized projects in Chugiak Eagle River. I'd like the, the committee to take that into consideration when we are looking at geographical equity, basically, for these projects. The other thing, when you look at the motorized projects, there's only been a single motorized project, and that was the Eagle River Road reconstruction from mile 5-2 to, to, to mile 12. So, um, just it's been frustrating for our community to just see um not that it has to be exactly amount but just consideration given to geographical equity when we are doing these um doing these planning projects um and i think you guys all know our opinions on on some of the some of the projects we're interested in so um thank you yes, any questions for me any questions for mr tegan Thanks, Will. All right, thanks. What is the will of the committee? I'll move to this approve the... Go ahead, Emma. I was going to uh, move to approve. A second. To approve, and the action is to... Uh, advance to the 45 day public comment period. It was moved by Ms. Bocon, seconded by Mr. Colhays. Uh, are there any objections to approving the motion? Yeah, I'm just not going to. Uh, I'm, I'm just I'm not going to vote for the amendment. Um, I still have reservations about the five million dollars given to the fort. I think this should be a PAMP project should not come from should that be on the TIP? This is a project that specifically, I know we was outvoted on it, but additionally, the removal, the Eagle River rehabilitation, you know, um, I guess, you know, there's there's three schools. There's uh, along there, um, you know, three elementary, there's a middle school, two elementary school. So there's three schools that feed that, that section of road. That's part of the reason it's a large project. I know it says five miles, but Realistically, it doesn't need to start at zero, mile zero. It should start around mile three and maybe go to mid mountain. It could be much smaller than what's in there to provide benefit. But unfortunately, we're not even allowed to plan. The $2.5 million was supposed to go in there for planning. They keep saying that they'll do something like that in the future, but if we're not even gonna fund planning for it and design, then there's no way we can even take little bites out of this elephant. So the non-motorized and motorized, it all gets lumped together. It's called too large of a project and we just don't do it. And then from, from the, the, the surrounding communities, they say, well, you don't meet the, uh, the qualifications under how we rate things under, uh, you know, under an equity agreement. But I would say drive around, drive and look at how many people live in trailers and live in all of their own large lots, but they live in, they've been living in mobile homes for 20, 30 years. Just drive through Chudiac Birchwood, look around, and what you'll see is that they don't meet because of the density. They don't meet our qualifications. But there is a lot of underserved community that just continues to get ignored. And again, here we are with another another an Eagle River will. Again, just get passed up. 10 years of non motorized. The only non motorized things that have been done have done with our own funds through our own tax dollars through, through uh, Subversa and then a one point two million dollar grant Kelly Merrick brought back for a wildly dilapidated section of bicycle trail that they had tried for years and years to get fixed, couldn't get fixed. So we finally went to the state ourselves and asked for money to fix that. So no, I'm not going to move to a minute because I don't think I don't think the design should be removed. Well, I think I'll I think I'll take a roll call vote. Is that oh, I, can I yeah, oh, call go ahead, sir. Thank you. Um, so I'm I'm looking at the complete streets table number two and I think it's interesting you know to consider various forms of equity I, I do think that we and I am glad we have in our scoring criteria um, consideration of disadvantaged populations etc um, but when I look at the complete streets 
list here, you know, hearing about sort of geographic equity. I'm noticing that there's a lot of South Anchorage projects. There's the O'Malley Road reconstruction. There's the Rabbit Creek Road rehabilitation, the Potter Drive rehabilitation, Mountain Air Drive, Academy Drive, Vanguard Drive. Um, and I'm just wondering if there's an opportunity maybe to um, put one of those projects further out in the TIF and make it illustrative um, in order to take a more bite-sized chunk of the Eagle River um, road rehabilitation project. Yeah, you know, we can't have a $60 million project on the TIF, understand that, but can, can there be a couple miles of um, the non-motorized element um, that has, you know, that the community has expressed a desire for. Um, so I guess that, it, you know, I would be interested in maybe amending this before it goes for public comment to that effect if there were um, will on the body to do so. And I guess my question for staff would be, um, you know, some of these have either local or state match. If we, if we look at some of the projects that I, I just mentioned though, would there, would there be one that I guess would be easier to push further out and make illustrative in order to um, make a portion of that Eagle River project here to go? Um, so I'll just kind of give some information on some of these projects. So you do see a number of these projects kind of in South Anchorage, and a lot of them are holdovers from previous tips as they've been moving forward. Previous tips had a lot of South Anchorage projects, um, and that's kind of just how the reality is. Projects take a really long time to move forward. Um, I will say Mountain Air Drive, for example, was not a high scoring project, but the policy committee wanted it in there anyways, so it was added in. Academy Vanguard Drive, well, we all kind of know the story behind that one. So um, at this time, you know, I don't know of any of the projects that can be delayed um, without significant impact to the schedule. I would need to research that more, which can be done during the public comment period. Um, to see if there's opportunity to move things around. It could be that during the public comment period, there are other changes that come from DOT, for example, where projects get shifted or cost estimates change and funding does become available. Um, and that might be an opportunity to add in a uh, less expensive version of the non-motorized improvements. Um, and it is easy for us to separate out the motorized and non-motorized improvements from a project. We can do that if that is the desire of the policy committee. Can I ask a follow up question, please? Um, Aaron, what would be an appropriate way to express our desire? Can we? So we advance this for public comment. I mean, is there a way that we can sort of put a caveat on there that that Eagle River project um, would be analyzed? Separately, I mean, is, is that a condition we can put on this or how, how would we best go about that? Uh, for me, from my perspective only technical side uh, to make it clean, it's very similar to what has been done on other projects. You could add it in as an illustrative project. Um, I think this pathway is very similar to one that already exists in the 2040 MTP. So it would meet that criteria as long as we follow that project and I believe it is Eagle River Loop Road to Mile High Avenue. Um, so you could add in that project as illustrative to table three under active transportation. Um, and as part of the public comment period, um, it's there for the public to see so we can get feedback. Hey, we want this project in, you know, all the support for it. Great. So then when we bring it back to the policy committee, and staff is like, hey, we've put this project in because funding became available. There's justification for it. The policy committee said, we want you to look at this as the next project on the list if funding becomes available. All the public is supportive of it. Let's make it happen. So to me, that would probably be the easiest way if what I just said makes sense. 
I think that does make sense. And if it's okay, I'd like to, to make <coughs> that motion that we would amend this um, to add that project as being illustrative. And I guess, Aaron, is there a, in the MTP then, is there a funding amount for that project that could go into that illustrative category as well? Um, so we wouldn't show any funding for illustrative because it's technically outside the tip. So we would just leave it as illustrative and blank. Um, I will say, I know people look at the 2040 MTP and say, oh, it's only $3 million. Those are old cost estimates, uh, and I would not trust that amount. I already have a request in uh, based on the discussion at the last policy committee meeting uh, to ask DOT for a cost estimate for this project. So during the public comment period uh, time, we will get a better idea of what that cost is, and I can send that to the policy committee members once it is made available to me. Okay, great. So if I could refine my motion, then I'd like to add then to the active transportation table um, a, an illustrative project description um, for the non motorized improvements portion of Eagle River Road. I guess the loop road. Eagle River. Road. Eagle River Loop Road to Mile High. Nope. Okay. Second. Motion is to amend to add that illustrative project uh, for a non motorized portion only for Eagle River Loop Road. Uh, and it, had, it was motion by member Boland, second by member Cross. Do we hear any objections to, uh, or do we have any further discussion on that? Uh, hearing none, uh, are there any uh, objections to uh, approving that motion? Hearing none, sounds like we'll add that one to the list. Was that a um, an amendment to the main motion then? Yes. Thank you. The main motion being to approve or to forward the the uh, tip to the public on the period of 45 days. So help me with procedure if you would please. Do we, is there any other further discussion on the main motion? Is that the proper thing to ask now? Or? Through the chair, the amendment was approved then, right? I don't yeah, think yes. well, yes. it was approved. Okay, so now you go back to the main motion as amended. So okay, which was to the 45 day. Okay, so is there any main, uh, <clears throat> any more discussion on the main motion as amended? Which is to, Forward the tip to the public 45 days for public comment, uh, including the um, project in Eagle River that we discussed. Um, yes. Okay. This, uh, okay. We'll Thank you. <laughs> um, so, in plans and studies, I, I brought this up a few times. We discussed it a little bit in our uh, transportation committee yesterday, too. Um, I did have the opportunity to meet with Aaron uh, recently, and so Thank you to my policy committee colleagues for um, being willing to postpone this the extra month to give me that time to meet with Aaron um, and ask some questions. Uh, I will say PLN 0009, uh, that's the non motorized facilities inventory and mapping that um, is being proposed for deletion from the tip via this amendment number two. It is a strong priority of the Anchorage Assembly. Um, you know, previously we passed an amendment on the tip uh, in support of this project. And not only in support of that, we wanted to expand it to include um, easements and, and unmapped right of way, et cetera. Um, in meeting with staff, um, I, I think the big issue with this project is that there's just not staff capacity to manage it. Um, along with all of these other things that are in the stack, right? And and some of these are um, ones that we have, like AMEPS has to do in order to maintain compliance. Um, and so it can't really be deprioritized in order to advance that project. Uh, but when I look at all of these, uh, you know, the, the various corridor plans, the complete street plan, I think they're all very valuable projects. And so I can understand um, why they can't all be advanced, but I think they're all important. So I guess I just hope at some point um, that is a project that can 
that can move forward. And so I actually have two requests. Um, number one, that when we look at our the, the plans and studies table, if we could have a special um, mark or language or something um, that would identify which are the projects that have to move forward to maintain federal compliance. Um, and I think that that might be interesting. I, I, I would be interested in, in amending this so that when it goes forward to the pub for public comment, the public can see that. So here's one that we got to do, right? We got to do the, um, I think the climate action plan is one of them, or the maybe the congestion management process one, that update. Um, so that's number one. Um, number two, and I guess this is a question for staff too, can we make um, the non-motorized facilities inventory and mapping, can we keep that on the tip as illustrative as well? Are we allowed to do illustrative planning and studies, that category? Um, yes, uh, for these projects that AMATS funds, we can make any of them illustrative as needed to show their continued importance for AMATS. Um, so if there is a desire by the committee to keep that around and should additional funding come available, should additional staff time come available, it would be one of the first projects we would look at adding back into the tip. OK, so with that information and um, I would like to move a couple more amendments before this goes forward for public comment. Um, so I would do that. Uh, I guess one amendment would be to should we talk about those amendments individually? Yeah, okay. so the one that I'll move first would be um, to have some type of demarcation in the plans and studies table, which are the ones that have to move forward um, to maintain federal compliance. Everybody understands that motion. Is there any discussion? Oh, sorry. Yeah, who seconded? Yeah. I'll second for the purposes of discussion, just because I'm not sure I have So, right. So we have a fiscally constrained program. Yep. Um, the public might see this list and say, oh, well, you know, I want to do this. Uh, this uh, easements inventory or that facilities inventory, I'm going to rest facilities, inventory. but it may not be required for federal compliance. Correct. It's and so they say, well, I don't want to do the congestion management process update. But that might be one that we have to do to maintain our federal compliance. So I'd like so to be a way for the public to engage with this when they're saying when if they want to comment on what projects are important to them, just that there's like a baseline understanding of we actually have to do this to maintain. So it's maybe an italics at the end of the project required for federal compliance. Yeah, some type of language or some type right. of okay. asterisk or something. I think that's I think that's wise. So um, motion by member Boland to delineate which of these plans are required for federal compliance. And that was seconded by member Cross is there any discussion? Sounds like a good idea to me. Um, are there any objections to approving the motion? Hearing none, uh, that motion is approved. Um, so now our current motion is to approve to move the tip forward to the 45 day public comment period uh, amended to add the Eagle River project as illustrative amended further to delineate which of these plans are required for federal compliance. That's approved. Can I have four one more time? And yes, please. Thank you. <laughs> I will move another amendment uh, that would make both the AMAT safety plan, uh, which is PLN 00009, and the non-motorized facilities inventory and mapping uh, project PLN 00019. Um, rather than delete them via tip amendment number two to make them illustrative. So what was the first one? It's the AMAT safety plan. And that's, the, and that's just further up in that same table. Okay. Yeah. Maybe it was illustrative. Uh, um, discussion? 
I need a second. Just, a just real quick, the AMAT safety plan is pretty much done, so it's being removed because it's not needed anymore. Did you want us to? Uh, yeah, I guess I music to my ears, so okay. I'll amend or I'll, I'll find my amendment. I guess for some system, <laughs> the non-motorized facilities inventory and mapping PLN 0001 no council less than. Uh, before I can't speak to it until it, it's a second. So I have a question. So is that a second, Ben? Yes. Well, uh, again, I'll second for purposes of discussion. Okay. Um, move, move, move by and second and Member Boland, seconded by Mr. Cross. I'm going to have a question for the spot. Any question? Please. Um, how is this different than? I mean, this is just a mapping problem with GIS. Well, you know, the best, I, I, I guess when I need maps for trails, I go to all trails. What is this doing that all trails won't do or doesn't do that is a pretty sophisticated trail mapping system with comments that, hey, here's where you should park, don't park here, here's the fees. Like, yeah, so this is actually quite a comprehensive project, and, and I think it would be helpful to hear staff speak to it as well. But when I met with Aaron, um, I think this is a it's a large undertaking. I think it's actually like the funding is pretty underquoted. Three hundred thousand. Yeah, <laughs> I think this would be a project over that would span years, if not like a decade, because it's inventorying all the non-motorized facilities, sidewalks, trails, um, et cetera, and putting you know I I think the outcome would be that they put all of that to GIS. Um, I would love, you know, if there's opportunity in the field in, in the future to add additional information, like we've talked about, you know, easements, right? Flat of easements to yeah. inventory of those. I think that would be helpful for a number of different reasons, whether that's public access to um, various amenities or if it's just helpful for people when they're considering real estate um, transactions. But uh, I, I think even this project alone uh, would require a lot of expertise and, uh, and a lot of time and that's why I can appreciate after meeting with staff that it would it would be quite the undertaking and um, they have limited capacity right now but I think it's very important um, I think that the our colleagues you know the, the wider assembly body have have made a, a strong statement mm -hmm. this is something that should be prioritized and so I guess I just don't want to lose it I, I would rather keep it as like the next to go future tip. Um, but I don't know if you'd like, I'm sure Aaron can speak to uh, the complexity of this project. Yeah, that'd be great. Aaron, would you mind um, kind of giving a description, uh, a little deeper description on what uh, PLN 00019 consisted of? Yeah, I think Daniel hit most of it on the head. So how this came about is when the non-motorized plan was being developed for AMATS, there was a, a, a gap in the available information uh, regarding what actual physical facilities exist in every location within the municipality of Anchorage, the AMATS portion of the municipality of Anchorage. So the idea was to bring this project forward and map all that information, all of that for us. So we can tell, okay, does this road have just a sidewalk? Does it have a pathway? Is it a separated pathway? Is it buffered? Like we need all of that kind of information uh, as staff, and I imagine the committees need it as well, to make informed decisions about projects that are moving forward. Because we'll often not be sure of what's out there, and then when we get out there, we find things are radically different from what we anticipated. And so costs increase, or projects have to change, it becomes a huge problem. So the idea here is to get more of that information in like a GIS system that's available to everybody, um, and have it available for whatever needs there are. I will let you know this is a monumental undertaking. <laughs> like mm -mm. It, it's a lot of work that is going to be required for this. But I think, you know, I know it's shown on here as being removed, and that's just from the technical side of things for me. But um, I think it is an important project for AMATS to keep consideration of as time goes forward. Okay, and I appreciate that, in which case I will keep my second in place. Um, I just wanted to know, so it's, we're not just mapping, we're actually uh, documenting the condition and uh, of the trail. So, you know, whether it's D1, compact D1 or open dirt or, you know, 
<laughs> for the purpose of okay. So the, the way it reads, it just reads like again, like something that all trails is doing. We're just providing a GIS map and you know, Google Earth that. So yeah, um, and, I, and I would support that. And again, this would be beyond just trails. This is any active transportation infrastructure. So sidewalks, I mean, this could be crosswalks, and can be I think anything that is accommodating vulnerable road users or active transportation. Yeah, and identifying those inconsistencies in travel, particularly, uh, we saw that a lot on the planning board when you have sections where sidewalks hadn't been developed because right. Because development didn't happen linear, it's sporadic, and then you end up with broken trails. Thank you. Any other discussion on on the uh, keeping PLN 0019 in the pit as illustrative? Hearing none, are there any objections to approving the motion? Hearing none, the, uh, the motion to amend the is uh, is approved. So our current motion is to move the tip to the 45 day public comment period, keep the Eagle River project in as illustrative, delineate the plans and studies table uh, to show which are required by federal process, and uh, to keep BLN 0019 in the tip again as illustrative. Any further discussion on the current motion? Hearing none, are there any objections to approving the, the uh, current motion? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Move the tip, 45 day public comment period as amended. Thank you. Where are we? We're on action item 5B, which is the draft 2020 MPO boundary. Aaron, do you have a presentation on this? Uh, yes, we'll do just a quick presentation on this and kind of go through here and help answer any questions if you have any. Um, <clears throat> so we have our MPO boundary. Um, every census, we have to update our MPO boundary um, for any changes that came about because of the census. So in our MPO boundary, uh, which I think you see on the screen there, um, you'll see some different areas. So I'm just going to kind of walk through those areas and explain them and then kind of walk through some of the changes um, to give you guys a quick overview. So the orange areas, orange colors that you see there, um, are the urbanized areas as designated by the census. So at a minimum, those areas must be within our MPO boundary. Our MPO boundary can be larger than those urbanized areas, but they cannot be smaller than them. And that is part of federal requirement. Uh, the hashed areas or the different hashings in uh, Anchorage Bowl and Chukaki River, those are the limited maintenance areas that we have. So those are air quality areas. If we have projects that fall within those areas, we have to do our air quality conformity determinations. Um, our MPO boundary is allowed to exceed the urbanized areas because it's to account for areas of growth that we anticipate to happen or areas that we want to plan for in our planning process. So you'll see that there are some areas where like, we're not sure growth is gonna happen there really, but we wanna account for it um, uh, because it's important for us uh, to consider. So the last boundary was done in 2010 with that census. So we're updating it to the 2020 census. There were very minor changes to the urbanized areas, um, mostly within the J Bear um, area. It expanded some, but even then it was minor. And then there were some small changes to the Chugak Eagle River. Um, part of this process is also us as AMATs making slight shifts and tweaks and uh, uh, changes to the boundary. Um, and we did make some changes. One of the big ones I want to talk about is on the uh, Glen Highway from the Muldoon area out to Eagle River. That MPO boundary line somehow was put down the middle of the Glen Highway. <laughs> so when we went in there, we realized 
we should include the entire Glen Highway uh, portion in our boundary. So you'll see the new one kind of juts out a little to cover the entire segment of the Glen Highway on both sides. Another change we found um, at Highland Road, that interchange, only a portion of it was within our MPO boundary. The southeastern portion was not in the MPO boundary for some reason. So we adjusted the boundary to cover that area. There were some other small smoothings that happened along um, <clears throat> the area, uh, the boundary. One thing we did have to do is we had to work with DOT as they were setting their own urban boundaries. And so it gets complicated. There's many layers here, so I apologize. But DOT is required to set urban boundaries for roads that they want designated as urban versus rural. So if they had set up these boundaries that say, OK, all the roads that fall within these boundaries are urban. We as an MPO have to include that boundary within our MPO boundary. So working with DOT, um, there was some small minor tweaks we had to make to make sure that everything matched up. We're all good in that end, and this is being brought before you for final approval. The Technical Advisory Committee did review this and recommended approval. And so it's before you for final approval today. Uh, just so you know what the plan is for this, should the Policy Committee approve it today, uh, it'll then be sent to DOT and PF for the state's support and approval, and then it'll be forwarded on to FHWA for their final approval. If it's approved by FHWA, this will be the updated boundary for AMAT's planning area. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the committee? I have just a couple, Aaron. I think you answered them, but um, as I'm learning MPOs, you know, uh, working through that Matsu Valley um, MPO, the, their boundary looks a lot different than the, the AMATS boundary and that it looks like it's pretty much just the, the UCA um, and our boundary is like twice as big. I guess two questions I had is that, you know, some of those hillside areas that are included there. Um, do we think that that growth will ever get to the density that's, uh, you know, that would warrant being in the MPO and uh, regardless of whether we think so or not, what are the benefits to those communities that have nurses up there that um, by being in uh, by being in the MPO. Does that question make any sense? Yeah, so there's there's two things uh, I forgot to mention. So um, or there's one thing I forgot to mention. <laughs> there's a tricky little thing about MPO boundaries that once you have set them, it is really hard to shrink them. So it's really easy to expand them to include areas. But to take areas out of it, it is very difficult to do. Um, and so. Before my time, a lot of the areas that you see in our MPO boundary were included in the AMATS boundary. So uh, removing them would be difficult. Now there is a benefit to be part of the MPO boundary. This enables us to utilize our federal funds in any location that is within our boundary. So the hillside areas, if they were not in our boundary, we could not use our TIP or UPWP funding out there. That's why we can't go south to uh, Indian Bird and Girdwood because they're not part of our boundary. They won't have enough density and there's not enough space. We're, we're allowed like hops and skips, jumps, these acronyms, I love them, uh, to basically jump from one location to the next, but it has to be within like a mile. That's why you'll see in the Eagle or the Eklutna area, there's a small gap between our boundaries here. Um, we're allowed to do a jump or skip or hop, whatever it's called these days, to get over to that location that we know development is happening and that we want to plan for either now or 20 years into the future. So it is a benefit for us to have a lot of these areas that are outside of the UZAs within our boundary. And I guess it's kind of a similar question for the, the Glen and the Seward highways. And maybe you answered my question already that uh, um, say that the Seward where it goes across Potter Marsh, maybe that's in the DOT's definition of the urban highway. Uh, and likewise, you said that, uh, you know, out towards, towards Eagle River, only half of the uh, highway is currently included. Um, 
those would be stiff projects anyway. What what benefit? Or I guess first of all, it, it, am I right? In my assumption that maybe those are within the urban boundary for the DOT, and if not, what benefit do those highways get from being in the MPL? I think that the Glen Highway is within the urban boundary uh, for DOT. I'd have to verify that, and I think portions of the Seward Highway South are, but I'd have to look at that. It, it's really hard to say what benefit there is other than it allows us to utilize our funding to assist where needed um, for future projects and to ensure that it is incorporated into our entire planning process. You know, because what we are responsible for as an MPO is making sure that we account for all roads within our boundary, uh, whether we actually put a project on there or not, are incorporated in like the MTP or the CMP. Um, and so I think for us as AMATS, there's a benefit because then it's part of the process. So we're like, okay, what is DOT doing on the Glen Highway for improvements here? Um, and how is that going to impact you know, Anchorage, or how's that going to impact Chugak Eagle River, or does AMATS need to step in and put money to the Glen Highway? Not saying that'll ever happen. That just is a possibility if there is a desire for it. Yeah, so that just seemed a, a little bit awkward with our Seward 98 to uh, 118 project that, um, you know, we're just dealing with that last mile or two there in AMATS, but I suppose it I don't see that there's any harm, I guess. Any yeah, and questions? sorry, the sorry. real problem you're going to run into is if you don't want it within our boundary, what is the justification for it? And yeah. FHWA is not looking for, well, we don't want the MPO involved in the process or the MPO doesn't make a decision on this road, so it shouldn't be within their boundary or all like there has to be a really good justifiable reason why it shouldn't be in the MPO boundary. And that's very hard to do these days. Any other comments or questions from the committee for Aaron? Hearing none, are there any comments from the public? Seeing none, uh, what is the will of the committee? Your motion. I'll move to approve the updated boundary map for the AMATS boundary for the right to be redundant. <laughs> Thanks again. With so moved by Mr. Cole Hayes. Here's second. I'll second. Seconded by uh, Member Bowen. Do I hear any objections to approving the motion? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Thank you. Getting there. Action item 5C is the DOT uh, and PF. Policy and procedure for MPO cooperation. Um, do you have a presentation, Karen? Yes, I was going to do just a quick uh, explanation of this. Um, so mm -hmm. I attended a STIP meeting, um, oh my goodness, maybe three or four weeks ago, I think at this point, um, with DOT, uh, Deputy Commissioner. And kind of where we're at and everything because they had some questions for us. Um, and at that meeting, they handed me this P and P uh, about MPO cooperation because I think there's a desire by DOT to kind of more formalize um, the cooperation between DOT and the MPOs. And so that's what this is trying to do here. So I brought it before the committees to get your guys's um, take on it to provide any comments to DOT and PF. I do know that um, the MPOs are going to be meeting at our quarterly meeting this Friday to talk about this some more. So uh, any comments that you all have, I think would be very beneficial uh, for that meeting. Uh, there's a letter attached as well. So at the technical advisory committee meeting, they reviewed the PMP and they had some comments that were put into this draft letter you he have here. Overall, it's really appreciative that DOT is doing this effort and we would love to work with them more. Um, but we just wanted to make some clarification on a few things as the document was not 100% clear. Um, the first being that AMATS already has cooperation documents on the development of our MTPs, TIP, UPWP for the MPO, and it's our operating agreement and public participation plan. 
this PNP um, was a little confusing because it was hard to see what it was trying to say about those documents because it had them in there about this is how the STIP or this is how the DOT and MPO will cooperate on the development of these documents. That already exists in a federally required <laughs> uh, operating agreement. So we're just trying to let people know that our operating agreement and public participation plan is the one that matters um, and that this PMP should not supersede them. Um, we want to make clear about an authority section uh, or the section in the authority area that the first paragraph, it's a little um, not clear um, regarding the responsibilities of an MPO uh, because it's, um, if you keep scrolling down to the authority section, Okay, thank you. So it's this first paragraph here. It says DOT is responsible for planning the statewide, including the national highway system and interstate, where the MPO is responsible for uh, transportation planning in a metropolitan area, normally on lower functionally classified roads and highways. This letter is just trying to make it clear that an MPO is responsible for all roads within our boundary, regardless of classification, regardless of who owns it. Uh, as if you're spending federal money on it, it has to be part of the transportation planning process. And our transportation planning process as AMATS is done through the MTP, the TIP, the CMP, and the federal performance measures. I mean, a good example of this and how I know that this is correct, the uh, performance measures that we have to set <laughs> are typically on NHS routes, and we as AMATS have an opportunity to set our own measures for most of them. So. We just want people to understand that it's more nuanced than what this letter says. And then last major point is that it looks like this PMP was creating some more effort for AMATS staff. I know it's an internal thing for DOT, but they had something in there about, uh, you know, requesting some information from AMATS staff on um, projects that are anticipated with corresponding funding and how they're going to be shared. That's already provided in the tip. And we really encourage DOT, um, everybody at DOT, to continually utilize the tip because we're constantly updating it and managing that program. Um, and just wanted everybody to be clear that, you know, staff time is limited and set by the policy committee through the UPWP. Um, I do know that uh, FAST was going to provide comments. I think MVP provided comments. I don't have those available for you all, um, but I did want to give you all this opportunity if you were interested in providing comments as well. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. I, I think I'm going to lean towards being conservative, maybe, and recuse myself from both the conversation and the vote. Um, so if you don't mind, Ken, I'm going to hand the gavel over to you. <laughs> <laughs> This is sure. Emma, if I might interject quickly um, for for purposes of this in a communication to another principal state agency, um, I think it's probably appropriate for me to recuse myself as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you both. Um, the next thing then is do are there any questions or comments from the committee on this? Okay. I just want to understand the approval of this. So the letter says that you're asking uh, the policy committee to review the DOT slash PF policy document and approve the letter with any additional comments. Approval of the letter basically just establishes once, because my understanding was we were already operating under this procedure plan. Are we not? But help me understand what this achieves. So this policy and procedure is a brand new one under DOT. Uh, it's for okay. DOT staff, and so this letter is just to provide them comments on the policy and procedure to help them refine it to make it more clear on what its intent and purpose is. Can you cite an instance where this isn't currently being adhered? Give me an example. Um, 
I mean, right now, most of the cooperation between DOT and the MPOs are done in a kind of informal basis. And I think the intent with this PMP is to make it more formalized. So it's easier for new DOT staff members who come in um, who may not be familiar with MPOs to know what the process is for certain portions of cooperation. This doesn't cover everything, just a few things. OK, I guess I'm just I, I almost need to I, for me to understand what the ramifications are. And it's not that I'm opposed to it. I just like to understand what I'm voting on. I always hate going in like it sounds good, but not understanding how it's seen in a, in a practical example. Um, so just for clarification, we're not voting on approval of the PNP itself. This would just be approval of the letter with the comments from the Technical Advisory Committee and if the PC had any comments. AMAS doesn't approve this PNP. It's an internal one to DOT. Okay. Staff statement. Thank you. Mr. Roll. Um, thank you. So, Aaron, I'm looking at the, the third recommendation or the third comment under authority section. And that last line, so for AMAS, this process is done as part of the MTP to say so the federal performance measures development. Um, is it accurate to say that the step? I, I, I guess what I would be interested in doing is like adding a line that would capture any facts related to the steps compliance with the MTP and the TIN. So, you know, I, I think we've learned recently in, during the STIP process um, and the letter that the policy committee forwarded on about that, that projects that, that are on the STIP have to be on either the MTP or the TIP. Is that correct? Um, in order for a project in an MPO boundary to be in the STIP, it is required to be both on the MTP and the TIP or consistent with. OK, um, do you think there's any is there any benefit in adding a line to that um, effect to that authority section comment? Uh, I mean, there's a lot I want to say to that, but um, I, I think it could be beneficial for us to add something um, if you would like that just kind of clarifies. The requirements for the STIP. Um, and the only reason I'm hesitant is there's been a lot of pushback about that from DOT. Okay. Okay. Appreciate that answer. And I guess I'll just wait till we get to the debate portion. Is that, uh, if I may, John. Please, Mr. Parks. I don't mean to beat a dead horse, but did the Track J follow that procedure? The Track J access road, emergency access road, was added to the step. Should probably not have been. The step was because it was not the tip or the MTP. That's well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I the, guess so it's the one thing under that extension people, now. And I would just point yeah. out that if we're going to set that this is the way it should go, we should probably follow our own guidance. Thank you. It has since been added to the MTP at our last meeting. Are there any other comments from the committee? Which I guess would be the three of us. Thank you. Any comments from the public on this? Hearing nothing from the public, what is the goal of the committee? So, Mr. Chair, um, I would like to add a line. So, I guess to amend. Then you need to approve it and then amend it. It's a little different. Need to move to approve. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. So, we'll move to approve. Send Second. this letter to. Moved by. Commissioner. I second it, yeah. and then he's going to amend, <laughs> and then I'm going to amend. Okay. Um, Mr. Wall. Yeah, so I think the line I, I want to add to the end of the authority section comment is, um, let me just flush this out. So furthermore, comma, um, 
projects on the step should projects on the step and I, mean, I think I'm gonna I mean I hate to put staff in an awkward position here but um should already be programmed on the MTP or the tip is that accurate Aaron shall have previously been programmed on the MTP or the tip I mean um for the projects in this tip must be on the MTP, must be on an MPO. There's a lot to add here, but it's furthermore projects um, within an MPO boundary. Sorry, hold on. Projects on the tip within an MPO boundary must be on on an MTP and tip prior. See, here's the problem. They're supposed to be on those documents before being added to the tip. However, not everybody agrees that that's the case. Um, and projects get added to the STIP regularly without being added to the MTP and TIP. Um, so uh, in my mind, Aaron, this is coming from. This is staff's perspective, right? This is the AMAP's perspective and as approved by the AMAP's policy committee. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not, I guess. You know, folks can have a different opinion, but this is this is our assertion. OK, um, and so I want to make sure that this reflects the opinion of staff and the opinion of the policy committee. Um, I'm not as concerned about the opinions of other entities. So. Yeah, I guess I, I want to capture. Um, I want to capture the reality that that in order to be programmed on the step, Projects should already be programmed within the MTP or the TIP. Um, you could say, furthermore, projects within the MPO boundary must be on uh, must be on the MTP and TIP prior to being added to the STIP. Okay, so I want to go with that language. Would you say must be programmed on? Programmed yeah, that's on? actually that that's. So that it must be programmed in the MTP and TIP prior to add it to the STIP. Is it and or or is it and? And it has to be in both. Okay. Were we able to capture that language? <laughs> you heard Aaron typing, so I think he captured okay. it. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'll I'll read it again out loud. Uh, furthermore, projects within the MPO. Sorry, I'm just trying to get spelling. Uh, projects within the MPO boundary must be programmed in the MTP and TIP prior to being added to the STIP. Okay, great. So move to amend to add that language um, after that last line in that authority section comment. Second, for the purposes of discussion. Yeah, so I, I guess I just um, I'll speak to the motion I, I, or the amendment. I want it to be um, you know, very clear. I, I guess I, I want to bolster this assertion um, that if, if there's a new policy and procedure being evaluated, um, that the MPO, you know, we really do have authority um, for planning any roadway that uses federal funding within our boundary. Um, and I think that we've seen, you know, a recent example um, when it came to the, the STIP planning process where there was a clash and there was a sort of a lack of understanding of how our MPO planning documents, you know, how the STIP needs to be consistent with those. Um, and so I think just as a matter of public record, us sending this letter, that that's an important, um, Corollary to the rest of this comment. So, um, okay. please, Mr. Chris. So, I have a question. Uh, I understand the problem Daniel's trying to resolve. I'm curious if, Aaron, you can speak to are there unintended consequences? What problems may this create? And 
having not you know served on this board or for years like can you tell me where this where where that change might create difficulties i mean i guess the big thing is is it's it's just us making comments to dot about their policy and procedure so they could technically say thanks we're not interested um and just move on so I think, you know, from my perspective, technical side, it's really just trying to provide clarity on what the 3C transportation planning process is supposed to do as spelled out in federal regulation. So I don't see it as a problem. All right, thank you. Any other discussion on the proposed amendment? Are there any objections? Is this the correct approach? Are there any objections to approving the amendment? Look for unanimous consent. Looking for unanimous consent. Hearing no objection, seeing nodding head, the amendment has passed. Now we're back on the main motion. Move to. Uh, We've moved there. So just, uh, yeah, we're going back on the main motion and ready to vote. On any other Do we need to move the motion as amended or is that, yeah. is that just understood? Motion as amended. I'll second. Well, I can second this chair. But, okay, so we have the main motion as amended. Are there objections to approving it as amended? No. Are you unanimous, unanimous consent? The amended motion is approved and i will pass the gavel back to mr holland thank you i think by <laughs> d which is transportation systems management and operations draft plan aaron yeah <laughs> I am actually not going to do much. We're going to play a little video that Christine Schutte recorded before she uh, uh, left, and then we can go from there. Thank you. Yeah, hang on a second. Should, should just be set setting to share. I can also I can also try to share it from another screen, but that's really messed up our audio, I think. Aaron, would you be able to share it? It looks like it's not letting us share computer sound on this end. Oh um I don't have the presentation myself. Um but uh if you sent it to me I could see about sharing it. Looks that she emailed it to you. Okay. Or Christine emailed to you. Oh, um, just a second. Let me see if I can find it in my email. Sorry. I'm forward to you. OK, I got it. Let me see if I can share it. See. OK, do you see my screen? Yes. Yeah, did you okay. click the button to say also share sound? Uh, when you shared your screen. Um, that didn't give me an option. Let me see. Um, share audio. Just let's, there we yeah, go. It's just here you go. Okay, OK, let's great. see if this works. Thank you. management and operations plan. Hello. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we can hear sorry. It. It's just very quiet. 
Okay, yeah, it kicked me out of the meeting when I played, so I apologize. Uh, I'll keep playing it and see what we can do. Okay, Otherwise great. Known as a Pismo plan. It's the first in the region, and it focuses on safety and efficiency. Strategies tend to look at the system that we already have and enhancing that. Practices typically focus on non-reoccurring congestion or momentary disruptions to the system. So weather events, special events, crashes, or the congestion uh, associated around work zones. Projects could be spot treatments, like a new pedestrian signal or crosswalk, or they can be system-wide, like a multi-agency coordinated traffic management system. A technical advisory group made up of state and municipal employees with the expertise needed provided guidance on this plan. The goals of the plan align with the AMATS Metropolitan Transportation Plan goals. Each objective has a corresponding screening criteria that can help select strategies and projects. And this criteria can be found in Appendix B of the plan. Um, TISMO is about operations and management. So each listed performance measure comes with a level of anticipated effort and can be considered for the next revision of the Metropolitan Transportation Plan. Strategies are broken down into three types, services, activities, and projects. And services provide system and operational information, or they do so more efficiently. Costs associated with services are recurring and direct. Activities are management and outreach activities, and the costs associated with this type of strategy are typically staff time to labor costs. And studies are used to understand, conceptualize, or facilitate system and operational issues. So this plan is just another tool in the toolbox. Um, AMATS can use it the next go around for the revision of the Metropolitan Transportation Plan, but other um, transportation planning entities in the region can use it um, to look at transportation improvements in the area. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> that's it. Okay, so um, hopefully you're able to hear uh, most of her presentation. But what's before you today is the TISMO plan that AMATS has been working on for a while now. Um, the memo kind of outlines the different uh, committee meetings that were have that were done. Um, the last time I believe um, this group saw anything was June of 2023 was just to give a quick project update on where we're at with it. So the TISMO plan is before you all today for final approval. Um, I can go into more detail if you need, but uh, I'll stop there. Thank you. Thanks, Aaron. Are there any questions or comments from the committee? Hearing any. Any uh, comments from the public? Not seeing any. Uh, what is the will of the committee? Do I hear a motion? Please approve the Move to approve the TSMO plan. TSMO plan. Second. Moved by Member Cross, seconded by um, Member Boland. Are there any objections to approving the motion? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Is Thank you. Last oh, is that the last action item here? Yes, it is, sir. We are on to agenda item 6A, which is the 2023 fourth quarter obligation report. We have a presentation. Uh, yes, I'll do just a quick overview of this. So <clears throat> the obligation report is just a reflection on how we did during the quarter uh, at obligating our TIP funding. Uh, just a reminder, this is for federal fiscal year quarters, not calendar year. So this would have been uh, through the end of 930 of 2023. So we're a little behind in getting it to you, but um, I apologize for that. 
So just wanted to provide this to you all to let you know how we did. Overall, we did a pretty good job um, with uh, obligating our funds. We were about $3 million short in our program in 23 in terms of obligating our funds. I will say that is because of the SERSA funding. So what happened is at the last minute, FHWA changed their mind and said, everybody has to get all their SERSA funding done in 2023. We thought we would have a 2024. And so we had to hurry up and get our SERSA funding obligated, which offset our STBG funding. There was not enough time for us to find other projects to put that STBG funding for. So there was about 3 million we did not obligate. The intent is to work with DOT to try and capture that $3 million in later years of the tip. So we will keep you updated as we hear more on that. Um, other than that, uh, I want to thank everybody for a good 2023. Um, it was it was tough with the CERSA funding and COVID and everything. So um, it was a lot to get it all done. So uh, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments from the committee? Not hearing any. Any from the public? Not seeing any. We can move on to the next agenda item, which is the 2023 fourth quarter project updates. Aaron, you have a presentation. Oh. Yes, do a quick overview of this and then uh, James can help if I miss anything. So James Starzik with DOT did put this together and we really appreciate his efforts. Uh, he felt it was necessary for us to start getting these quarterly project updates along with our quarterly obligation reports. I think it's a fantastic idea and everybody has been supportive of this. So you're going to keep seeing this coming to you every quarter. So this basically just outlines every project that we as AMATS have underway. Um, through our TIP program, um, and we actually have planning projects added in here too. The previous version you saw of it didn't have the planning projects, but we added those in, so you can kind of tell where things are, like the complete streets plan, the downtown streets engineering study, the climate action plan. It has not been updated for this quarter, so please recognize some of the information is outdated, but we will update it as soon as we can. Um, this document is on the AMATS website. It lives on the AMATS website and is updated every quarter. So uh, the information's here. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks. Thank you, Aaron. Are there any uh, questions or comments from the committee? Hearing none. Any comments from the public? Seeing none. Oh, well, sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Sergeant. Go ahead. Hey, uh, James Starzik, uh, DOT Planning. Uh, I just want to remind all the committee members uh, that if you do have uh, questions uh, about any of the projects listed in this report, the project manager's name uh, is included with every project, uh, and they're always available uh, to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? I'll um, just say thank you for putting this together. I think it's very helpful. Um, Aaron, are there any other further project or plan updates? Uh, no further project or plan updates. We were on to, and we're making progress. We're on to item seven, general information. I do actually have an item for this one. Um, if you would indulge me a sec. I wanted to bring up a couple of things just to talk to the committees about. Um, We've heard a couple of times that the committee members would like to have more time reviewing documents. Um, and so in an effort to try and accommodate that to make things a little easier for you all, staff is adjusting how we do certain things uh, to get documents to you sooner or to provide more information to you earlier so you know what's coming up. Hmm. Um, I've already moved forward on a couple of things for this um, and we'll be doing more as time goes on. So two items I wanted to mention really quickly for you. Uh, the first is um, on the agendas, we're going to start putting uh, under the general information items, a routine update for you all to explain what is on the next agenda for the following month, um, especially if they're big ticket items. So good example is in February, please be ready. We will have the 2050 MTP and the AMAT safety plan coming forward for approval. Um, 
And in that vein, the second item we'll be doing, our intent is to send large documents uh, or things that need a lot of review out much earlier than we have been previously. Uh, typically, we wait until the documents are posted to the agenda to send them to the committee members. We're going to go ahead and adjust that a little, um, and we're going to try it with these two documents. So the 2050 MTP, um, the intent is to send it out to you probably tomorrow, um, uh, just because how today is going, but we'll see today or tomorrow uh, for you to start reviewing that document. The anticipation for that is to get final approval for that 2050 MTP. And then the AMAT safety plan, the hope is to send it to you early next week. So you'll have multiple weeks uh, to start reviewing these documents before they come to you for final approval. The hope is this will help in the long run, um, enable you to gather your thoughts, ask questions, meet with staff if you have things you need to follow up on. Um, I will say the intent here is not to make changes to the documents between when we send them to you and when they go to the committee. That still all has to happen as part of our regular process, which is at the committees itself. But it's hopefully a good opportunity to gather all that information. Um, we are always looking for recommendations or requests that you have in any way that we can help. So um, if you have other things you would like to see us do, please let us know. Thanks, Aaron. Any, any questions about that for Aaron? Sure. Yes. No questions, but I just want to thank you, Aaron and staff. That'll be really helpful, I think, to provide those documents and that update early enough for us to, at least for me, not speaking to other members, but for me to have some time to really um, review them and be prepared for the meeting. So thank you. Thank you. The agenda item number eight, which is committee comments. Does does anyone on the committee have any comments to add to that? Yeah. I, I do. Yeah, Mr. Ball. Mr. Young and Ellen, please pass on our our, our uh, well wishes to uh, uh, Miss Shooty. Thank you, and I guess I should let everybody know. Um, <laughs> AMAT staff is a little shorthanded right now. Uh, Christine Schutte is out of the office until April or so. Um, and uh, that with the other empty position we have means we are down two people right now. So um, just please uh, bear with us as we make uh, the most of the staff we do have. I know that John and Chelsea do an amazing amount of work already, so I appreciate it. And Mook has been invaluable with her help for meetings and agendas and everything. So I, I really appreciate everybody who has supported us in this time. Thank you. Anybody else in the committee? Yeah. Um, I guess maybe just to kind of follow up to Aaron's comments earlier. Uh, you know, when I first started here, uh, me and James kind of ran me through with AMATS 101, and I uh, since have noticed that that's on, that uh, presentation is on the uh, website. Um, so I know everybody's busy, but that could have value for new people as they come on to the committee. And likewise, yesterday we made the uh, offer to the Assembly Transportation Committee that uh, we had planners that could come over and kind of give a lesson on the federal process, which I think would be uh, would be helpful for those that don't work in it every day. But um, anyway, those are my two comments. Um, agenda item number nine. Are there any public comments? No comments. Thank you. Um, so agenda item number ten is adjournment. Uh, do we hear? A, do we have a motion to adjourn? Second move to adjourn. Second. Seconded by. Any objections to? Approving the motion. I hear none. We're adjourned at uh, 2.21 p.m. Thank you all. Yeah, thank you.